Here we go. Sorry, a little bit disorganised, give me a sec. Hi Michael, how you doing? We're doing well, Michael. Doing well. Hi, Martin. Elwood, how are you doing? Well, at the moment, starting the evening with a little Robert Lewis 123 mixture. First time I'm trying it. I got this in um, the video, in the package that I got, the videos that I bought from Danny uh, Shaw. And it's a cigar leaf mixture. Hi Sean, and um, although it's a very enjoyable mixture, I don't really get much in the way of cigar leaf out of it. But it's a nice mixture nonetheless. It's a nice, easy going Latakia mixture. Evening, Razvan. Elwood, did I say that I was going to send you a cigar and I didn't? If I did, I apologise. My memory is not great. Best intentions and all that. Oh, it's good coffee. <laughs> Quaker, you're not late. I've only just started. I was a bit late myself. I went to get a coffee. I was actually recalling a video beforehand. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm going to even put it up. I'm smoking the meerschaum. I'm smoking that uh, one, two, three mixture. Hey, leather belt, cigar fan. So anyway, I was going to put up a video, that particular video that I made in reference to a particular presenter, I've taken that video down. The main reason for that being, as was pointed out by Real McCoy Piper, that um, it's very possible that that presenter would come across. would come across the video and it would be extremely painful for him to uh, see the comments and things like that and about him being spoken about and I, I think that's fair enough but the main purpose of the video that I made was to try and clarify my intentions my intentions were never I, I probably won't put that video up but I'll just sort of summarize it here my main intentions were really to highlight the fact that I felt that there was a, again I was speaking for myself, but um, I just felt that there was this trend for people to bear all um, and just essentially in the politest possible way say that I'm going through a terrible time, I'm really poor, give me money. And my affection for the YTPC just urged me to do something about that and to say something about it. Hi Pipe Tree. It really wasn't about him in particular, although his video was the catalyst, but it's actually been something that I've wanted to say for a long, long time. And the same with the comments about giveaways. I've been wanting to say that for a long time as well, but I really hesitated because I didn't want to be coming across like a wet blanket. I've done my fair share of giveaways, I've done my fair share of um, sending out packages, so I don't feel in any way that I haven't contributed enough to be able to comment, but I just didn't want to 
be negative about it. But it gets to a stage when you worry about the future cultural stability of the YTPC in as much as it is today. And it's recognized as a generous, collegiate, affectionate, warm and welcoming society. But what I didn't want was that it would be much like my driving to work, whereas every second traffic light I'm accosted by somebody begging for money. Now, I don't doubt that those people are having tough times and they've got challenges in life, and I, I, I am sympathetic. But at the same time, it gets a bit much sometimes. Now, call me heartless, maybe. But on the YTPC, it's a pipe channel. Again, there's not a question about, pe about being less than charitable. Anybody who is, has been on the YTPC long enough um, will know that the YTPC is a very generous environment. Um, Yeah, um, I'm pleased you took that back, Tim. Um, again, the, the reason why I took my um, video down was because I felt that perhaps it was too directed at that presenter, and that really wasn't what, what, wasn't what it was about. It was more about it getting out of hand. Um, and it's not to minimize the challenges that people go through. You all saw um, how... Um, You all saw how when Ethan had his issue, his crash, and when uh, people got round, rallied round for Danny Shaw, and further back, that uh, couple that, that suffered flooding, the, the YTPC doesn't lack generosity. I'm, I was just concerned that somebody of that caliber, of that presenter's caliber, and with that kind of fan base, 21,000 subscribers, when somebody like that starts to proverbially outstretch his hand, a fan base like that of 21,000 viewers, you know, a lot of those people are going to think, that's de rigueur, that's acceptable, that's what we should be doing. Whenever we need some money, just ask for it on the YTPC. And that, I think, would have been um, an erroneous step. That's, that was my feeling. Now. You might say, it's none of your business. It's his channel, he can do what he wants. And that's absolutely true. That's absolutely right. But by the same token, I'm also entitled to an opinion. Um, and whilst I don't often get on my high horse, on this occasion I just felt, because of the stature of the man, and whilst, again, I'm not attacking him, but it's because of the stature and the following that he has that I felt that that could change the direction the YTPC takes if everybody thought that it was okay to do that. And I just wanted to point out that even if you didn't intend to do this, it's not okay. In my opinion, some people think it's fine, and that's okay. I don't have a problem, I really don't have a problem with him asking for assistance to run his channel. That's fine, I really don't. Nobody deserves it more than him. 21,000 subscribers is evidence of that. He puts in a huge amount, I know, I know how much time I put into mine, and it's probably minuscule compared to his. So, I give him kudos for what he's achieved. And if he were to say, I'm opening up a Patreon page, or a GoFundMe, to help fund my channel, no problem, absolutely fine. He deserves it, I would probably support it, I'd probably give him some money myself. But when you couch it in a framework of, my mum's ill, I'm going to have to go off air and I'm not going to be presenting any more videos unless I can find a way to do this, that or the other. It really didn't come across nicely to me. But anyway, as I say, that's just my personal opinion on that. And uh, if it's taken badly by some people, that's fine. I, I, I decided to take that risk. I was really sort of hesitant to do it. Um, Elwood, you may well be right. You know, we're all human beings and we all take things as we see them. One of the reasons why I thought perhaps that I was wrong is because 
his style of presentation is so broken down <clears throat> and so intentional and considered and broken down to the finest detail so the thickest person in the world could understand what he was saying um, and that's an attraction for a lot of people because especially when you're new to pipes I don't mean that badly by the way it's just uh, I'm trying to describe his style um, but for new pipe smokers they need things broken down so that they understand it that's fantastic um, but so that was the one reason why I thought perhaps I was wrong, that he was just breaking it down in his, in his inimitable fashion. But I personally, the, 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 what I took from it was that he was using that style to make it crystal clear what the position was. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, that's, that's the way it is. I, I didn't know that, that, wasn't, that people were saying that 21,000 wasn't real. And I must be honest, um, I found it very surprising because although his channel is very popular, he jumped. Now I can see that somebody would go from, let's take me for an example. I've been, I've had a YouTube channel now for two and a half years. Um, two and a half years, maybe a drop longer. I think it was November, 2016 possibly, or 15 is it? Yeah, 15. So it's two years and seven months, roughly eight months maybe. And, and perhaps my content isn't as popular as his. Okay, so I can't compare myself to him entirely. But um, he had, if, in my memory, he had about three or four, maybe 5,000 subscribers. And then suddenly he jumped to 21. Um, that's, that's all I noticed. Um, but I didn't think he, he did that uh, in a criminal way. Not criminal, the wrong word. But I didn't think there was anything crooked about it. Um, so I don't know. I, I really don't know. It, it was a big jump. But maybe I just didn't watch his videos for a while, and it was an incremental increase. I don't know, <clears throat> but to me, to jump from three or four thousand subscribers to jump to twenty-one should take a few years. But who am, who am I to know? Um, there are some channels who I've seen legitimately jump up um, when um, um, the the Tim Tim Bradley um, Tim and Bradley when they had their cigar. I can't remember what it was called now. Uh, TNT cigars. Um, they had a channel, they had about 80 or 90,000 subscribers, they split off and Tim opened up his own business and Bradley stayed with TNT Cigars um, and when Tim went live, he's gone up to, I think he's on a similar amount now and he's done that in weeks, literally in weeks and that I believe was legitimate because you could, even in that short time you could see a, a steady incremental sort of... <coughs> It will sort itself out, Elwood, you're yeah, 100% right. That YTPC has its dramas every few months. <coughs> it's, it's the same with the giveaways. It's all speculation, yeah. Uh, somebody who recently one in a giveaway <coughs> um, somebody who recently won in a giveaway contacted me not my giveaway somebody else's giveaway and they were really concerned that they may have won with irregularities yes Quaker you're probably right and generally speaking I do try to do that but on this occasion I don't know maybe, maybe I was um, impulsive I don't know but something inside me just said that it's time to say something I just wish that I didn't say it in direct response to this video. That was my mistake. No, I haven't done it yet, Bumbling Piper. We've been chatting too much. The package is there. Such a cool sticker. I've been smoking this now for about 45 minutes. It's a um, one, two, three mixture, and I've been trying for the life of me to, to get some cigar flavor in there, but I'm not. It's supposed to be a cigar blend. All right. <coughs> <coughs> 
So, let's call that chat a day, and let's move on to the tobacco press, which I'm sure is what all of you have come on for. And not to listen to my driveling. Yeah, it was quick. Um, I don't know if he did that express or whatever, but I can see that he paid a lot of money to get this over to me. So um, I certainly owe him. <clears throat> I'm going to open up the package. I haven't used this one for a long time. This is a Chris... I can't remember his name. Christopher something knives. I can't remember, but it's a beautiful little thing. It's custom made. Um, I haven't shown this bef too often, but it's a nice knife. It's sharp as well, trust me. I'm just opening it off camera because there's names all over it. So just bear with me. Whoops. Yeah. I think that was actually my first knife, but I don't use it very often. I might have had the spider go before, I'm not sure. Hey Big V Piper, how you doing? Friend, one tobacco press. I hope it made the journey intact. I have added an indicator mark on the top and the top and the top rim of the press. The lid fits a little better one way down the other. Okay. I look forward to seeing this in use and I hope you make some great cakes. I enjoy your videos and look forward to your live chats. Thanks for taking the time to make good content. That's my pleasure. Um, I included some mason jar top stickers. Oh wow, that is so cool. For London fog. In case you want to use them, I had a lot of fun making the press. If possible, try to keep my name and address. No, okay. So here are the stickers for London fog. That is so cool. Thank you very much, Josh. That is awesome. <coughs> that is absolutely awesome. Thank you very, very much. Now let's take this out. Right, so in terms of a clamp, <clears throat> I don't have a C-clamp, but what I do have is one of these. I haven't used it in a while, but it's very large. So, what we have is, this is made out of composite, as opposed to wood, which I'm very, very... Um, relieved with. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll, we'll have to see. If not, if I can't do it tonight, then I won't. Um, 
So this is made out of composite, so that it won't expand and, and uh, absorb the juices that come off the tobacco. Right, Eric, I don't know if you heard the rest of the uh, video that we've uh, had so far for the first uh, 15 minutes or so. But anyway, so that's the main area for the tobacco. That's the base. So that's going to sit on there. And this is the top rim this here which will s sit in there and slide down and let me show you that how it does that it's a really cool oh silly boy Just, just show you how awesomely constructed this thing is. Josh, awesome. I hope it's actually not too good because it might be difficult to get out. I don't see why that clamp won't work, to be honest, um, Elwood, but we'll try. So if we imagine, let's just do it like this. bigger uh, mouth on there. Well, depending on how much tobacco I use, I could just start it off with it, but I won't get very far. You're quite right, Elwood. I, I uh, defer to your wisdom. Yeah, no, you're right. It needs to have a much uh, deeper throat um, for it to work. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, hmm, it's a good question, what to use. I'll have to come up with something. So we're not going to do anything tonight, I don't think. Um, but I will, I've got to mix up some uh, blends, decide what I'm actually going to use as my first cake. Um, it's something that I want the tobaccos to really marry. <clears throat> I think that rather than, um, it is awesome, um, rather than using a, uh, a convoluted setup, I think it just makes sense to get a big C clamp. Um, it's just going to be less hassle, and it's what it's been designed to do. He's done a little sort of groove there to fit the uh, round disc of the C clamp. So if I can find one with a deep enough and long enough reach, um, that's what I'll do. Otherwise, it's just faffing around. I just love the way that top bit just travels down there so well. Yeah. A toilet plunger, a broom handle, any of those might work well. Um, but as I say, I'm going to try and find a, uh, the right C clamp for that. Hey there, Jeff. How are you doing? Uh, but I do think that the working chip on this is fantastic. It really is awesome. Because it has a certain degree of simplicity to it. Um, I've seen some of the uh, presses that people have made. Um, I've yet to see one better than the one that um, uh, French Canadian pipe, per French Canadian piper made the metal one, which he gave. I think he gave one to the Dagners and he gave one to 
stutter. Um, but I think this actually is is so simple and it should work very, very well. Um, I'm really excited to try this. So I'm going to go and get me a, a C-clamp tomorrow, hopefully. We'll go down to one of the hardware stores. I've got some grease-proof paper, which I can use. So perhaps we'll do a, another, either a recording or a live, getting all that together. Hi, Bri Blues, how are you doing? So that, my friends, is the tobacco clamp. We'll leave that there, pride of place for now. And let's get back to the pipe. So how has everybody been this evening? Well, the sticker. Oh, you mean off the off the cart and his sticker? Yeah, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be using an extra large C clamp, uh, Briar Blues. Yeah, his sticker. That would be a cool idea, actually. Yeah. Let's see if I can salvage it. I may have ripped it unwittingly. Hang on. No, it's still there. Yeah, we'll have to do something with that. Has anybody else tried this um, blend? One, two, three mixture by Robert Lewis. It's supposed to be a cigar blend. How are you doing, Ray? What are you smoking this evening? Cheers, Ray. Uh, no, I don't get any cigar from it at all. It's not a bad blend. Pedro 1964, now there's a cigar. Well, to be honest, Tim, um, it's... It's a, it's a nice enough anytime uh, Latakia based blend. Um, although the uh, on tobacco reviews it shows it as a, a light touch of Latakia, for me it's still the front runner. I mean, Latakia generally in any blend kind of pops out ahead of most other um, flavors in a blend where Latakia is present, um, in my experience anyway. Um, but this one is supposed to have a light touch of Latakia, but for me it's still the front runner. But the whole blend completely is quite a mild blend. So it's a, I think it's a pretty good anytime smoke. And I think that the cigar leaf and the other contents just gives it, it rounds it out. It gives it a nice um, middle of the road flavor, which sort of supports that Latakia flavor. So it's got like a earthy, chocolatey flavor there sometimes. See you, Blues. Cuban mix, as in LJ Peretti's, Bumbling Piper.
Yeah, I, I'll be honest, I didn't particularly go for that one either. I've got some in my uh, baggy um, container. Well, Ray, that's quite apt. It's uh, 20 to 1 in the morning, so there you go. Early morning, very early morning. Are you based in the UK, Ray? I don't remember if you've told me that before. Mm. <laughs> so you're a Yorkshire lad, are you? Oh, I thought I was I, as in yes. Tennessee, okay. Sean, hi. Try and plan putting reserve seeing my not a review video. Enjoying it much more than the original. Mm -hmm. I haven't smoked any any of them for a while now. I'm kind. Of, I've got a. I think I still have one left of the of the special reserve. And I think I've got a special reserve of Mississippi River. But I'm not feeling the urge to open any of those at the moment. I've I've got some regular, open small jars of uh, Mississippi River and plum pudding, so. It doesn't make the sense really. Northwoods is still, I would say, is still my uh, my number one um, Latakia blend, but I'm not smoking Latakias that much, so it's hard to say. No, that would have been interesting, I would. Uh, is that something new, or is that an old thing? Because now, because of my... Um, affectation for Virginia's, I'm appreciating Special Atakia Flake a lot more as well, because Special Atakia Flake is, um, is is very Virginia, I won't say Virginia forward, but it's certainly got a lot of Virginia in there compared to the Latakia, and it's exceptional Virginia. Hmm. That sounds interesting, sounds intriguing. Well, I can't buy from Pipes and Cigars. In fact, Pipes and Cigars now, we can't actually get onto their website now in the UK, which is a new development in the last few months. Um, I still managed to get onto Tobacco Pipes, or Pipes and Tobaccos. I always get into the two confused, but Pipes and Cigars, I can't actually get on anymore. Yeah, the Pipers picnic tomorrow. Anybody in the UK or in the vicinity of London Go along, you'll have a great time. Is that a, an EU thing or a US thing? Well, have you got it already, Elwood? Not my address, but the tobacco. Oh, you've ordered it, cool. Well, let me know how it is first before you send it over. I'll be honest with you, um, I've got far too much tobacco. But if you recommend it, then I'll be happy to try it. I'd love to try it. And I'm also very conscious of the cost of shipping. One of the things which um, is kind of starting to, uh, I wouldn't say become difficult, I'm not starting a GoFundMe page or anything like that, but... I do find the shipping quite restrictive uh, to the US. And especially when I'm ordering stuff. Um, see, for instance, that uh, batch of tobacco that I bought from Danny Shaw, I had him send it over to somebody in America. I had to get shipped over in two packages, and each one is about $60. Um, that's a lot of money. And it's not. Uh, it didn't occur to me at the time I knew I'd have to pay shipping, but I didn't expect it to be that kind of money. $120, $130. I've got to say that whilst I'm not going to go out on a limb and say cigar flavour, but the flavour is certainly 
I'm, I'm sort of halfway, way past halfway in the amount that I put in. I only put in just over half a bowl, and I'm probably halfway through that. There is a certain nuttiness coming through, which perhaps it's that uh, cigar leaf developing through with the latik here. Well, when I say this is quite mild, bear in mind that I'm smoking in a meerschaum and with a 9mm filter. If I would smoke this in a regular pipe, I'd probably get bitten with it, but in this particular scenario, it's very pleasant. Managed to get ash on my hand. I was hoping Joshua would be on here for the uh, unveiling. Unless he's on here, just being humble. Josh, we can hear your humility. looking to get cigar flavor then smoke a cigar um, but if you don't smoke cigars and you want to uh, get some semblance of cigar flavor then I guess find a cigar leaf tobacco which does resemble some cigar flavors I haven't found one yet you know I've tried quite a few um, having said that if you want to smoke a cigar but in a pipe. A lot of people do this, just chop up a pipe and put it in your, uh, <laughs> chop up a cigar and put it in your pipe. I have smoked, um, I have smoked a, a nub of a cigar by just popping it in there. I wouldn't uh, cut up a cigar and, and, and shred it and then put it in into like a ribbon cut. That I wouldn't do, it'd be an absolute waste of a cigar. Well, I'm sure some people might, but for me it's a waste of a cigar. If I was nubbing a cigar and it was too hot to handle and just stick it in the pipe, that could work. Um, I've only done it once, I think. And it worked. Um, I don't remember what the flavours were like, whether it affected it. Maybe there were some legacy flavours in the pipe anyway, so I don't know. I don't remember. No, chopping up my pipe would not do. Although, having said that, um, the other day I was uh, trying to take a stem off a pipe um, and it was stuck. And as I was pulling it, the whole thing just came apart in my hands. I just binned it. It wasn't worth rescuing. Hey, Joe. Um, yeah, I think um, um, a is it Alex? I can't remember. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I've I've often tried rum topped. Although there are some like autumn evening and things like that which do get, have decent flavour, but the navy flakes and things like that which have um, rum toppings, I think you're right. For the most part, they don't really come through in any significant way. Elwood, I think that is actually a fairly good solution for a cigar which is plugged. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. But it depends on the cigar. If it's a decent cigar, I'd much rather keep cutting the cigar until I got past the plug or use a tool that um, clears the plug, even though I don't believe in them very much. <clears throat> but I'd rather try and rescue the smoke rather than chop it up. Perhaps as a very, very last resort, that's not a bad idea. But the problem with that is, is that you only really, well I suppose 
with a plug cigar, you would know before you light it. But oftentimes, you've already lit the cigar. And once you've lit the cigar and you've drawn through it, you've already tainted the whole of the cigar. Um, if you keep your cigar alight, then that's fine. And you're just going through the journey of your cigar with that as it is. But once it goes out and you relight it, you will find that your cigars are often tainted. Yes, you could purge them and improve the flavour, but if you then took a lit cigar, chopped it up and put it in, obviously not the cherry at the top, but the rest of it, I think it may well be tainted, but I haven't tried that. I've never heard of those, Alex. Does anybody know how England did in the runners-up? Oh. No surprise there, I guess. Did they put out a full team or an also a round team? Well, that's a shame. It would have been nice if they could come back with something. But, you know, a semi-final place is something, really, so... They did well to get there. This always happens when I smoke the Mirsham. When I try to tap it to get rid of some of the burnt ash, the whole thing falls out. Because it's so dry, there's nothing goopy at the bottom to hold um, the tobacco in, and it just drops out. And I try to do it really gingerly, but it's already dropped out, and I'm just going to leave it. All right. Well, old Lang Syne, you uh, maybe it's forcing you to watch them, but you do what's best for you. It is very distracting. It gets very distracting at times when you have so much social media content out there. It does take up a lot of time, and I guess I'm one of the uh, protagonists of taking up people's time. I've got to be honest with you, Sean, and it's a good question in terms of vapors against straight Virginias. Um, some of the straight Virginias that I smoke taste like vapors, um, and I, I continue to be amazed at how diverse the flavors can be from one type of leaf. Obviously, the, the leaves can be blended from different regions in the world and different processes put together, so you can have stoved and you can have uh, straight, you can have lots of different types of Virginia leaf put together to create a blend, but I'm still always amazed. And the same with cigars, um, you know, a cigar leaf you might think is just a cigar leaf, but, you know, put different cigar leaves together. I mean, take Cuban cigars as an example. 
all of the tobacco in every single one of the 28 or 29 Cuban brands are all grown on that same island on Cuba. Um, nevertheless, they all taste different. Um, I find the differences not as distinct as perhaps they might have been in the past, but they all do taste different. Um, oh, Josh, how are you? We were just uh, lauding your skills. How long have you been on, Josh? Tell me the truth. Silence is golden, golden. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. Okay, anyway, Josh, awesome job. We uh, took out your uh, press and um, I brought a clamp with me, but it's the wrong type of clamp, so we couldn't actually immediately do. Uh, a first run, if you like. But we all marvelled at the workmanship, and I absolutely love the way the lid travels down through there. I think it's so cool. Um, but I'm really looking forward to using it. So hopefully tomorrow I'll pick up a press, and um, we'll be able to do our first one then. Cheers, Alex. Have a good one. Well, Dunhill Pipe Tobacco is, is technically no more. Um, I, I've been, uh, certainly in the UK, I've been assured by um, the people that I buy my tobacco from that there is enough supply of tobacco, certainly in the UK, to keep it going for, to supply shops for another year, year and a half, maybe more, depending on take up. Um, as to the rest of the world, I don't know. Um, but there's still always the chance that somebody will take the license up and continue producing it. As we stand at the moment, they don't have anybody to take it up. The, the, the current, um, the current people who um, have the blend, the, the license, have not renewed it, so um, that's where it stands. Um, it's the same company, as far as I know, that owns Orlik, but I don't know um, that it affects Orlik. Um, as far as I know, it doesn't, but I don't know, but I don't know for sure. It's just the Dunhill license, which um, I think, is it the Scandinavian group? that owns um, Orlick, <coughs> or British American Tobacco, and then perhaps British American Tobacco is owned by Sc Scandinavian. I forget which way around it is. But either way, th that company also owns Orlick, but um, I don't see that it affects Orlick. I might be wrong, but I think it's just Dunhill, because Dunhill, which is a UK brand, has licensed out, licensed out the recipes um, of all the Dunhill blends. Once that stops, I don't see why it affects Orlick. Yeah, 100%, uh, Tim. Um, I've, I haven't got a huge amount of Dunhill, um, but um, every so often I buy a tin here and there to, to just keep it, you know, just to add to the cellar. You're 100% right. Rather than having this mad rush like we saw with uh, McClellan's. McClellan's was something else, it was just...
Yeah, um, I think that's rather than stocking up on a particular brand, my, my worry is the hobby in total. Um, I don't know whether it'll affect us in our lifetime, but certainly there seems to be a trend moving faster and faster towards banning it completely. Um, and that's, that's more worrying, really. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Elwood. You do see lots of iterations of tobaccos, and they're often quite different. Um, even the current iteration is not actual Dunhill. Um, actual Dunhill stuff went out the window whenever it was, in, in the 80s or, or 90s, something like that. So they'll all, they'll all be quite different. Well, perhaps subtly, but they'll be different. But certainly, if you like the way the blend is at the moment, um, it may well be different in the future, quite right. How's it going, Tree? You taking anything special to the uh, picnic tomorrow? Sometimes, Elwood, sometimes. Don't get ahead of yourself. Unfortunately, I'm not going to make it. Sundays is really difficult for me, although I did manage the uh, Nottingham Pipe Show. But um, generally speaking, um, Sundays are set aside for the family, so I, I feel bad to do a second Sunday off. Um, so I'm happy that I was able to go to Nottingham, but... Uh, so this is difficult generally if I'm not working. I tend to be going out with the family generally. to uh, light up a cigar. Any cigar uh, aficionados on today? Michael, are you still with us? Oh, there you go. Look at that timing. No, I'm not smoking anything at the moment. The remainder of my bowl dropped out before, so I'm not refilling it. Um... I was thinking possibly of a high poly. I was thinking possibly of the new La Gloria Cubana, the D5. Although they've only just been released, but they're very tasty.
Okay, now can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Josh, um, we did the whole uh, reveal before. Um, fantastic piece of kit. I don't know how much you heard. But I will do a proper video of it when I get uh, a C clamp. Wide open drawer. Nice and cedary and spicy. Hmm. It made it in super time, Josh. You spent a fortune on that shipping. I know how you feel about that. And thank you for the stickers, yeah, absolutely. In fact, I should really put one of them onto the jar. Hang on, I'll do that in a minute. Well, I didn't get a box with mine because um, they were shipped from America and it just, the shipping cost too much money, so got them without the box. Um, Josh, I I'm not sure that there should be too much lateral pressure. Um, I don't know, if, if you put downward force on the clamp, does that automatically push I suppose in order to get that box shape and to press down, it's going to be pushing all over the place, isn't it? I mean, I could clamp the outsides anyway. I mean, I could use the... Uh, Hey Ben, there's no such thing as an odd time to live stream. No matter what time you live stream, somebody somewhere is going to be up. So I could use that um, to just hold the sides together. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. You smoked these before, Ray, have you? Yeah, I'll do that. Um, I don't really know. I haven't decided poorly. Um, the London Fog, I like it the way it is. I don't know what pressing will do to it. Maybe it'll make it better, I don't know. Yeah, I will definitely be putting it in a container, that's for sure. Um, if it doesn't leak, then the pressing's not working really very well, is it? Um, I don't really know. In duct tape tree, I don't think, will stop any of that pressure. It might stop it... Uh, uh, dismantling, but it will still bulge if it's going to bulge. Duct tape's not going to stop that. Which this one, Ray, Ben? 
um, I bought that in JJ Fox's. Um, when I bought it, that was the last one they had in stock. Um, but when I've been there recently, when I was there for the pipe club last week, they had them upstairs all over the place, so they're probably back in stock. I mean, they put them out on the tables for people to use whilst they're in the lounge. Um, they're not expensive. I think they're about 30 or 40 pounds. And they hold a huge amount of gas, so they last forever. Which pipe lighter? What, this one? Well, it won't be this one, because you can't get it anymore. This is a vintage lighter, but maybe a copy of it. They're giving one of these away. That's a cigar lighter, not a pipe lighter. That's pretty cool if they're giving those away. I do have some um, Serie V Milano Churchill size coming, so I'm quite looking forward to trying those. The Milanos are very nice, but they're quite rich. I mean, these are quite full on anyway, but they've got good flavours, really good flavour. My coffee is a regular coffee, um, it's just the way I make it that's different. Um, it's a regular Nescafe gold blend uh, most of the time, um, but uh, I'm about, I fill about half the cup with the coffee and then I froth milk. The rest of it is froth milk and it's topped with powdered chocolate, drinking chocolate. I've had the Magnum 46s, I had one the other day. Um, like any of the narrower, um, A. Chapman is probably my favourite brand, um, and it is underrated. I think the A. Chapman number no. 2 is very underrated, the, the Pyramid. Um, but I would say that my probably my favourite one for different reasons, not necessarily for the best flavour out of the lot, but you know, the, the Connoisseur A is very nice, but it's more expensive. Um, the Magnum 50 the same, it's a nice cigar, but it's more expensive. So for me, the sweet spot is the Connoisseur number one. And I would say that's probably my number one cigar. <coughs> <coughs> if I had to do a desert, a desert island uh, kind of situation, that would probably be the one I'd go for. It's a good size. It's, um, I think it's a 48, isn't it? I prefer the Connoisseur one to the 46 and I do find that the 46s um, although tr the same is true for the number one as well that there are quite a number of them are quite tight which is the usual Cuban frustration what would you say is your number one if you had to Michael Well, for me, the, the um, if you haven't tried them, try them. Um, I find that the Connoisseur Number no. One has probably got the most fragrant um, flavors out of all of them. I mean, the, the H. Hartmans are fragrant anyway. They've got this floral aspect to their profile, um, but 
In the air trap line, yeah. I'll show you. Just give me a sec. It's a beautiful sight, isn't it? So that is your A Trapman Connoisseur number one. And the 46, I'm not sure if I've got one anymore. I had one um, just last week. But the 46 is a little bit longer, perhaps a fraction longer, and a little bit narrower. I think this is either a 48 or a 50, I don't remember. Uh, let me just have a quick look. <coughs> It's so a 48 by 5, and the 46, well it's a 46 obviously, <laughs> silly boy, let's see what length it is. It's a 5 and 5 eighths, so um, it's just a, a touch over 5 and a half inches, so it's about half inch longer. Um, and a fraction narrower. But this is, for me, that's the sweet spot. Anything akin to a Robusto for me is right. Um, to a, a European Robusto as opposed to an American Robusto, because they tend to be 54 ring gauge on a lot of them. This uh, particular box is 2017, April 2017, so it's got just over a year on it, but it's already a delicious smoke. Um, I do put them in a humidor in the box. I have a frigidor. Cigars will last um, a long, long time, many years. Um, you often see vintage cigars being sold which are 60, 70 years old. As long as they're stored, they will be fine. Um, uh, the only aspect of that is is that flavors and essential oils which are in the leaf can evaporate. So that's the journey that you have with a Cuban cigar is that um, flavors will change. Um, so at the beginning of a cigar's life, a Cuban cigar can't really speak much for non-Cubans, but I think to some extent it's the same. Um, um, but after you reach the sweet spot, it kind of develops and develops, but you do get to a point where you start to lose the, the breadth of flavors. Um, I would say that's probably 
around the 10 year mark, 15 year mark, but I'm no expert. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, that I base my opinion on the Magnum 50. Um, I had some Magnum 50s from 2008, so 10 years on them. Um, and I preferred them when they were four or five years old. Whereas when they were 10 years old, I just felt that they lost some of their punch. Um, they were a little bit too smooth, a little bit too mellow. Um, very nice and, you know, very sweet smoking and very nice flavors, but just it had lost a little bit of the punch. Um, some questions here. Um, what do you think about how cigars are rated, Ray? Um, to be honest with you, it's okay to give you a guideline, to give you some indication if you're, um, if you're kind of starting up with cigars, you can use that as a guideline because those people are used to smoking cigars all the time and they'll have um, an educated opinion. But you can be the best judge. I think you can't really say, um, you know, when uh, I was very uh, effusive about uh, the Andalusian bull when it came out and, and became a, a cigar aficionado's number one cigar in 2016. Um, I didn't rate it personally. I, I tried it and um, it certainly had some different flavors, but I, I found that only for the first 10-15 minutes and the last 10-15 minutes the two hours in between, because it's a big cigar, the two hours in between I found extremely monotonous and boring, um, and I didn't smoke it again for that reason. But it could be with time it's better, but um, I certainly didn't feel that it was deserving of the number one spot. Um, so they claim that they're all done blindly, the, their tastings, and who am I to disagree? But, you know, everybody has different tastes. But they are supposed to be taking a consensus of a whole panel of tasters and therefore there is some consensus reached so you can give some credibility to it but I wouldn't uh, uh, stake my flag on it as they say um, Elwood um, you ask I am very cigar ignorant may I ask a question are all robust of cigars always the same size Churchill etc and the answer to that is no um, it used to be um, the Robusta was a 5x50, five 50, um, 50 ring gauge by 5 inches. But nowadays, um, that's kind of out the window. Um, certainly on Cubans, you will still find, for the most part, the traditional sizes are kept. But in America, anything goes really. Um, it, there's a vague... Um, there's a vague adherence to the sizes, but it's very vague. So you won't get uh, a Robusto, which will be seven inches long, but you will get a Robusto, which could be five and a half or six inches long. And rather than being a 50 ring gauge, it could be a 54 ring gauge. Um, but still, the, the, there will be a vague adherence to the sizes. So um, generally speaking, a Churchill is going to be around um, a seven, six and a half, seven inches, 47 ring gauge up to... In America, it could be a, a 56 ring cage. One lucky one. Yes, Drew Estate cigars I've smoked and have a fair number of... Um, I have the Undercrown, uh, uh, the Shade, the, the Maduro, and the Sun Grown. The Sun Grown being my favourite of the, of the Drew Estates that I've smoked so far. Ben, um, generally speaking, um, I, I find in America that uh, in the winter people don't smoke cigars that much and in the summer everybody's out on their porch smoking a cigar. Um, I tend to enjoy my cigars mostly in my car and in my office here. Um, sitting in the garden, um, I would enjoy it, but generally speaking, when I'm smoking, I'm working as well. Um, if I'm in my office, I'm working at the same time. Um, and smoking a cigar is often an hour to two hours and I most of the time, not always, but most of the time don't have the time to sit in the garden and do nothing other than smoke a cigar so I tend not to smoke outside very much um, and when I'm out for the day perhaps with family or walking in the streets or anything like that I don't tend to enjoy smoking a cigar when I'm walking um, a pipe, yes, um, but cigars, no 
Um, so when I'm moving, I don't tend to enjoy cigars that much. The Underground Sun Grown is certainly quite punchy. The shade is not, the shade is quite a mild cigar. And the Maduro, it's not the strongest cigar in the world. Where are you based, Ben? I don't know, Sean, uh, what the difference is when I'm walking around. Perhaps I can't focus on the smoke, I can't enjoy it. It's, uh, I don't know. It's a good question, but I don't know. South End, cool. I was there not long ago, went there with the wife for a couple of days. No ashtray, what does that mean? Lovely white ash on this cigar. Which is supposed to indicate a well-developed soil, I believe. Oh, I see. Uh, no ashtray. No, <laughs> that's quite true, but I don't think that's got anything to do with it. Um, I don't know. I just don't enjoy the experience. Um, I don't know what it is. Yeah, sorry, Elwood. Ha ha. No, it's not a Melania. It's a regular Serie V. Um... I do have some, but I'm not smoking them now. I find that the, the Milanos are very nice, very, very nice, but they're, they're quite a bit richer. Um, so I don't smoke them that often. I am curious to see what the Churchill is like, though, when it comes. I did get a, um, a customs card today, which is... Uh, Yeah, which I haven't had for a while. It's it's uh, it's not terrible. It's fifteen pounds, thirty six pence. So I'm not too worried about it. It may well be those uh, Churchills. <laughs> well, some of the ash dropped, and I thought it was about to drop, but it doesn't want to drop. There you go. So I don't know if the Churchill will make a difference and, and the, uh, so that the richness will build up rather than hitting you in the face straight away. Um, I, did, I have smoked the Figurado, or the Perfecto. I think it was the Perfecto, actually. It was, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I had two of them, and I smoked them fairly quickly. Um, and this time I, was, I had the option of getting either uh, the Perfecto or the Churchill, but... It just worked out to be the Churchill in the end, so we'll see what that one's like. See you, Polly.
nothing on there I would, to be honest. There was a box, but I don't think I've got it anymore. Um, but to be honest, if it looks like this, it's going to be the same thing because it's not like it's a, a very expensive lighter which is going to get faked. So it's most likely to be the same thing made in China, I'm sure. It was only 30 quid, 35 quid, something like that. So it's most likely the same thing. Sean, um, I would say for the most part Cubans, but um, still a fair amount of non-Cubans, but I would say that Cubans are my mainstay in terms of cigars. But I'm not smoking cigars very much, well, not, nowhere near as much as I used to. More into the pipes at the moment, but it's kind of goes in, in roundabouts, swings in roundabouts, I suppose. Sometimes it's more cigars than pipes. That could well be, Ben. Um, just search tabletop cigar lighters, I don't know, jet lighters. Uh, one lucky one. Uh, what filters are you using? Which filters are you using? Yeah, well, the White Elephant brand, those are Mirchon filters. Um, try try some of the charcoal ones. I think you'll have better success with them. That would be my advice. Of the nine... Of the uh, nine mil charcoal ones, I've, I've tried several and I've really not seen a huge difference between them. I'll do that, Tim. Okay, so that's Dr. Poe Jr. Uh, And that's also Vaughan. Let's see, you got a Dr. Pearl made by Vaughan. Then you've got a Dr. Pearl. These, I think, are old. I think I got these. For, no, maybe not. It's got the plastic cap on it. And that one also. And I've probably come to the end of my other ones. Yeah, I think these are all the same. But I've had Peterson ones. I've had Dr. Pearl ones. Um, I can't remember the mix of the other ones. But... I do need to restock. Mm. No, I haven't had great um, success with the Balsa Woods. It does remove moisture, but it doesn't have um, the active content that charcoal gives. I have a couple of corn cobs, uh, but I'm not a big fan. Hi Mick, um, I didn't give up on it as much as um, it It didn't really work as well as I, I, I might have thought and to be honest um, I haven't really just, I just really haven't tried it that much. Um, there is another option at the moment which I'm going to look into, which is those three mil filters which I got um, when I was last at JJ Fox's. I think they're in this box. Let me just have a look. Oh, I don't think I've actually showed this, but did I show it? Yeah, I did. I showed it in the video on the Pipe Club of London meet. So I got. I picked this one up. This is a very nice little bent pipe. Got nice green on it. Um, and there was. There you go. So the guy at the till gave me one to sample. This is a. It's just paper. And it's. Hollow. There's nothing in there. It's just card, and it's supposed to absorb moisture. And the idea was was to take an unfiltered pipe, yeah, so it doesn't really 
Like you can squeeze it in there, depending on how much room you've got. Obviously you can cut it down. Uh, maybe I'll just try that actually. I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's going to really work very well. There's not enough footprint there of paper to absorb enough liquid in my humble. Well, perhaps I might give that a go. No, it won't work because it's too short. The hole in there is not long enough. I don't know, I've got to have a think about that and see if this is going to work. Oh, that's cool. So maybe I'll give it another try, Mick. Um, the problem that is that with most, the majority of them, there just isn't much room because the, the, the tenon tends to take up the majority of the room. Um, some pipes you'll have enough of a gap to stuff some material in there to, to absorb. Which is what I do with my fill of our calabash pipe. I have a rolled up filter in there. Um, but, and that works very well. I suppose the other option is to try um, the Nording um, stones, the, the, the keystones. I've never tried that. I do have some somewhere, which I got with a pipe from Danish Pipe Shop some time ago, and I've just never tried them. So maybe I'll try that. Moisture certainly seems to be the key, as to if you can get rid of some of the moisture, it does seem to sort out your tongue bite. Well, so far I've been asked once by my dentist and I, at the time I wasn't really smoking cigars that much and I told her I was a pipe smoker um, and I had about a bowl a day which equates to a couple of half a bowls, maybe sometimes three half bowls and um, she put me down as a non-smoker but um, I don't know is the short answer, I haven't really had uh, much of an issue with that Hopefully that will continue. Yes, Josh. Excellent solution. Right, gentlemen, I think that will do for an evening, unless there's anything else anybody wants to uh, chat about. Well, that's one way to do it, Tim. That's a very tough question, uh, Ben. Um, Yeah, it's the age-old question. I don't know. I honestly don't know. There's no healthy option, let's be honest. But um, in terms of if you're going to have a choice of smoking cigarettes or a pipe, there's no, there's no doubt that a pipe is better. I think everybody would agree with that. But you just won't find any official body um, condoning it, because they can't. You can't condone any type of smoking. There's plenty of examples of people smoking cigars living well into the 90s, but that doesn't, you know, out of 7 billion people, you'll always find some that do fine. Um, I don't think that's an argument, to be honest. Um, there's a, an article in this month's um, Cigar Aficionado, 
um, of a guy who's 112 years old. There's a picture of him smoking a cigar. He smokes 12 a day. I haven't got it in the room here, otherwise I'll show it to you. Yeah, I mean, you'll, as I say, you'll find plenty of, you know, people who have done fine, and you'll, I'm sure if, if somebody goes through the statistics, they'll find plenty of people who um, have had the opposite uh, experience. I, I don't think it really has much weight to quote individuals who have done okay despite being smokers. You're all about the links, Mr. Smoke Guy. Thank you. There you go. Richard Overton. A few weeks before his 109th birthday. And he's 112 years old on... Uh, he turned 112 on the 11th of May. Imagine that, 112 years old. The guy was around, for the, he was already an adult in the First World War and certainly in the Second World War. Unbelievable. And he got through the wars unscathed. But that's a real exception. I mean, that's. Uh, he says um, he had a doctor once told him to drop the cigars. He ignored the advice. I smoke 12 a day, he says, but I don't inhale them. It's the good taste. Let your lungs stay clean. <clears throat> he not only loves his cigars, but he has a taste for whiskey. And uh, he puts uh, a bit of a splash of whiskey into his coffee in the morning. A cocktail, he claims, has a beneficial effect. He says it's like medicine. <laughs> I couldn't vouch for that. Well, I think one of the uh, one of the most classic um, partnerings with a pipe, it's got to be a milky coffee with a Latakia blend. Well, I have to admit, I'm not a big whiskey drinker. I do enjoy it from time to time, but uh, it's not a regular thing for me. Alcohol generally is not a regular thing, although I do enjoy it from time to time, but it's not something which uh, I turn to.
Yeah, tea is also good. I do, um, I do enjoy um, a great tea when I smoke from time to time. Um, I do enjoy Earl Grey. That's probably what I drink the most in terms of tea. Um, occasionally on its own without milk, but not with lemon either. Although that's probably a good idea, but mostly with milk. Yeah, you're probably right, Ben. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it is late. It's uh, 10 to 2 in the morning. Um, but I am quite a night owl. I tend to work a lot at night. Um, but I tend to do these once a week. Do you want my uh, inside leg measurement as well there, Ben? Just kidding. Right, gentlemen. I think uh, we can call it a day. Thanks very much for joining. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, one lucky one. Thank you, Josh. Josh, a big thank you. But we'll do that justice uh, on another occasion. Um, thank you, Ben Elwood, Mick, Mr. Smoke Guy. Thank you for all your links. And everybody else, Tim, Tree, Cheesy Bacon, I've only just seen you, sorry. Oh yeah, the Blitz filters, okay. Um, and everybody else. Thanks all for joining. Yes, please do, Josh. Uh, yeah, Mick, I mean, that, that's still not a regular situation, smoking a pipe anymore. But um, certainly in the US it's picked up in a big way, and here I think it's picked up, but it's only still nowhere near enough to make any kind of real resurgence. Anyway, nighty night everybody, or oh, good morning, and we will catch you on the next one.